I would like to now move on to the first of our award winners this evening, Farouiza Fahan, who likes to call herself Wiza. She's from Aceh in Sumatra in Indonesia and is a young woman of tremendous grit and courage. She grew up as the daughter of academics on a university campus and her family mantra was, listen, if you get a PhD, it's not an achievement, it's an expectation. Wiesa fell in love with the ocean as a young girl and really planned to be a marine biologist. But as she witnessed the destruction of the natural world that she loved, uh, the reef through development and the, fire, the forest fires that were just raging through the, the beautiful uh, Loisa ecosystem, uh, really entirely for profit, she became instead a tiger. She decided to champion the last great forest ecosystem that survives in Sumatra, the Lusa ecosystem, um, where you find the last remaining Sumatran tigers, um, rhino, orangutan, and elephants. And really, um, it was her fearless opposition to this rapacious oil palm lobby and also to her own government um, that she's now brought. It's allowed her to bring the battle for nature into the courtrooms. And despite endemic corruption and fierce opposition uh, and a lot of male prejudice, she has persevered and really succeeded in some fundamental ways. Her triumphs have been noticed by another great champion of the environment these days, Leonardo DiCaprio. And she and also one of our previous award winners, Rudy Putra, appeared in his amazing film called um, After the Flood? Before the Flood. Before the Flood. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Weezer remains undaunted despite having received many threats to her personal safety and we are just absolutely thrilled that this reward will help her, help propel her to ever greater heights. Weezer. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so thrilled, so honored, so incredibly thankful, grateful for the opportunity to stand here before all of you. Thank you, FF and thank you, His Majesty, for coming to the event. I would like to think that this award is not just for me. I'm just here simply representing an entire team, men and women working day and night with me to protect the Loisette ecosystem. It all began here. As a teenager, I went snorkeling for the first time. I see beautiful coral reef, and I thought, awesome, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. I'll go diving, and it'll all be awesome. But then, I did my undergrad in marine biology to come back to the very same beach, where I fell in love with the ocean the first time to find it completely devastated. I was mad, I was angry, but I feel a little bit powerless. And then I come across <coughs> sorry, <laughs> this beautiful place called the Loiser Ecosystem. It is this great expanse of tropical rainforest, the last of its kind in Sumatra. Most of the Loiser Ecosystem is located in the province of Aceh, where I was from. The very, very, the very place where I was born. To get a grip on how big the Loisa ecosystem is, imagine it's two-thirds of the Netherlands protected area. Imagine, oh, <laughs> sorry, okay. Imagine coastal pit swamp forests going up to rugged mountain, alpine meadows, valley, and rich lowland forests. It's the last great expanse of forest in Sumatra. It is the last place on earth where the critically endangered Sumatran rhino, elephant, tiger, and orangutan still coexist together in the wild. But beyond that, it's also home to so many other species, countless hundreds of birds, insects, and amphibians that probably we haven't even discovered yet. These species' interaction with the forest are important to maintain the health 
of the forest, which maintain the ecosystem services needed for the livelihood of over 4 million people living within and around the Loisette ecosystem. Clean water, clean air, and most important, protection from natural disaster like flood and landslide that happen in Aceh very often. The thing is, beauty alone is not enough to protect the Loisette ecosystem. At the moment, the Loiser ecosystem are facing tremendous threat like it never before. At the moment, the Loiser ecosystem are being deliberately destroyed. Roads are being built to cut through this precious ecosystem. Forest fire to clear land for all palm plantations. Wildlife are being poisoned and poached because of conflict with humans. Now, I'd like you to take a moment I mean, life in the Netherlands are very smooth and organized, but take a moment to imagine what it feels like to be there when the forest fires are raging. You inhale the smoke. It stings your eyes. It burns your lungs. It hurts your throat. There is no escape from that. For some people who live in Sumatra and Borneo, they live with the situation for seven months of the year. Nature is not dying. Nature is being killed by people with name and address. All this are being done for profits. These forest fires happened because we make way for our palm plantation. These profitable crops create this very versatile oil that probably a whole lot of you consume every day without you even realize. It's in your chips, it's in your biscuits, it's in your chocolate bar, it's probably even in your shampoo. But it's not all bad, like, don't get all serious. <laughs> in 2012, when the forest fires burned to the forest of Tripa, the orangutan capital of the world, we launched a massive campaign. Some of you are involved, some of you working day and night, trying to put a spotlight in this case. Because everyone is paying attention, because everyone is pushing. The government decide, yes, we will do law enforcement. What happened then? We equipped them with the best information, we involved in training the judges, we put a spotlight in the case to make sure it will be very difficult for them to be corrupt and get away with it. As a result, for the first time ever in Indonesia, the company is fined $26 million. It never happened before. And the director of the company was sentenced for three years in jail. It also never happened before. Although they haven't paid for it, they're still working on it. We'll get there, we'll get there. But instead of celebrating the success of this court case, the provincial government decided that we were a threat. At that time, I was working for a provincial government agency. Before my own eyes, overnight, our government agency was dismantled. The next thing they're trying to do is dismantle the protection of the Loiser ecosystem as well. I'm gonna talk about something that is very not sexy for the, word, the field of conservation. This thing called the spatial plan. A spatial plan is practically a regulation where the government decides what kind of activity could be conducted where. It's the kind of regulation that would decide what kind of activity that will be legal, what kind of activity that will be illegal. At that time, when the spatial plan was launched, we feel the, the rock was swept under our feet. Suddenly, we feel like we're going to lose the protection of this very precious ecosystem. What we do then, initially we run a campaign, we try to get them to change their mind. A few years, it doesn't work, it's fine. All, all of us decided that we can't accept this. The government have to do something about this. So we launched a citizen lawsuit. The citizen lawsuit is the type of legal case that is not very common in Indonesia, and it's the first of its kind in Aceh. All these communities 
uh, standing up together, taking on the government. All these communities are people who are on the front line of forest destruction. These are the people who have lost their land, who have had to take their children to the hospital when forest fire raging and they have respiratory infection. These are the people who have their home swept away when the floods happen. The battle lasts for a year. Last year, towards the end, we hear that the court decided that we have lost. The court decided that the destruction of the Loiser ecosystem was legal. It's kind of disheartening, but what happened, it united us. It made us stronger. This man is an indigenous leader. He was one of the plaintiffs. Through being in court, he learned that the world stand with him. Through being in court, he learned that he's not alone fighting his little battle on the ground. Through being in court, he learned that his voice could be louder, that things could change. Aceh have a long history of conflict and war that have lasted for centuries. We are now live in peace, but it's a peace that is hard won and fought for. But if the destruction of the environment continues to unravel and the same pace it is today, we will lose our forests, we will lose our resources, we will lose our water, we will lose our livelihood. The next war might not be over territory, it might be over water. Conserving the environment is important for us all. I'm here today because I refuse to accept the status quo, because I'm very stubborn, like a lot of people before me. I'm here today to remind all of you to join me in the fight to love the Loisa ecosystem. Ladies and gentlemen, Congratulations to this lovely lady, Farwiza Farhan.